As AT&T and Verizon continue to roll out their 5G wireless technology, the FAA and airlines have raised concerns over the C-band spectrum interfering with radio altimeters used in automated aircraft landings. Tom Wheeler was the chairman of the FCC and is currently a visiting fellow at Brookings Institution. Tom, welcome to the program. Hello, Mimi. How are you? You wrote an op-ed which is titled, Will 5G Mean Airplanes Falling from the Sky? Will it? No. Okay, there we go. <laughs> you know, what we're doing, we're, we're talking about this, this come um, temp flying T, if you, but s since we're talking here about government matters, this is an example of how government matters and how it is important to actually govern rather than go through the motions or talk about governing. And I'll give you the specific example here. What, what this proves is during the Trump administration, we had a situation where the Federal Aviation Administration was aware of what was going on at the Federal Communications Commission, had several years advanced no notice, could have acted and didn't. Then we had the Federal Communications Commission who did all the right things on science, but then failed to consider the consequences of those correct RF decisions. And then the appeal was made by the FAA to the Trump White House where these kinds of interagency disputes ultimately have to get resolved. And it was December 2020, and the Trump White House was more concerned with protecting the big lie so, than Tom, Tom, what dealing you, with the issue. You see this as a failure of federal leadership then. So what needs Correct. to happen? Is this, does this need to come from the White House, from the FCC? What's going on here? Well, the great thing is that, that the Biden administration was handed this hot potato when they walked in and they stepped up and did what the White House should have done years ago, you know, in 2020 with the, during the Trump administration. And they brought everybody together. They banged some heads together. They got resolution. And now the FAA is, is doing a couple of things. One, they're saying that about 90 percent of the altimeters um, are now uh, uh, safe and can be used uh, in this environment. Okay, but, um, but you're is, saying 90%, um, that leaves 10% that could... Yeah, but let me, but, but, oh, absolutely, but let me go back here. The, the fascinating thing is that wasn't done previously. You know, there are no standards for altimeters, and there was no survey of what the effect would be. It could have been done long before this tempest in a teapot started. But to your question, yes, there's 10% of altimeters that are there now. That goes to the consequences of the decision-making of the Trump FCC. All right, so what so, needs so, to, to but, happen to make sure that those altimeters can coexist safely with uh, 5G? Well, I think that what the Trump FCC should have done is they paid the uh, satellite companies whose spectrum they were repurposing for the pain and suffering and new equipment that was necessary. And had they considered the consequences of that move, they would have used the $81 billion that was collected from wireless companies to fix, to pay, to fix altimeters. And that's where we are right now. Altimeters have to be fixed. The companies have appropriately um, engaged, and, and again, at the request of the Biden administration, have lowered their service levels around airports so as to not trigger any interference, but that's not a long-term solution. The long-term solution is you gotta fix altimeters that weren't adequate in the first place. So, Tom, I'm not calling you old, but I know you've been in the wireless telecom business a really long time. Have you seen something like this happen before in the past? Yes, I mean, we've. This is a this is a situation 
that is not unusual when you move into new spectrum. I mean, I remember the days when 3G was being introduced, and you do too, Mimi, um, that when 3G was being introduced and, and it was interfering with electric wheelchairs. Um, I remember when 4G was being introduced and it was uh, interfering with hearing aids. Um, I remember when they were interfering with pacemakers. You want to talk about a life and death kind of situation? Let's talk about pacemakers. So, Those but were Tom, all solvable, it, and we were able to solve it, and we can solve these. So not to, not to cut you off, but, I mean, what needs to be done now so that we don't have a similar problem with 6G? Well, the government agencies need to be talking to each other. <laughs> That's the start. You know, we, that, that was where the whole thing fell apart. Um, and, and we know the 6G is coming. Um, we need to be considering the, the consequences of what that is. You know, so let's, let's back up. There is a standard for 5G, just like there'll be a standard for 6G. There was no standard for altimeters. You know, it is, it is naive to, cons to, to, to believe that in these days, um, you can operate in uh, the radio frequency spectrum and not have some kind of standard for what those operations are. But that's what airplanes were doing. All right. Amazing. Well, well, Tom, thank you so much for joining us. I guess we'll see what happens with 6G. Thank you so much. Thanks. Bye-bye. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss out on any future Government Matters interviews.